Good morning, everybody. Lando and I are at the primary children's this morning. We are here for a doctor appointment. It's a follow-up appointment. For my uh, gate lab. Yes, for those of you who have been watching us for a while. End of last year, Landon got a gate lab, like a gate study done, where they analyze the way that he walks in every way you can imagine. It's really, really cool. And this is the orthopedic surgeon where we follow up on that gait study and he tells us what they found in the gait study and what he would recommend as far as treatment. So we're here, Landon just barely got an x-ray of his hips. So the doctor will have that as well to compare to his last x-ray and we're gonna find out what he says. As you can see, they are taking cautions for COVID-19 when we got here. They asked us tons of questions about what kind of symptoms we might experience, be experiencing, which thankfully we're not experiencing any of those symptoms. They, they asked if we're positive for COVID-19 and... They took our temperatures <laughs> and they gave us these cool masks. Yeah. So, so. it's kind of crazy, this is our new normal. Well, that was a good appointment. Yeah. The doctor doesn't seem to think you need any surgery. What? He says you're doing super well and we're just gonna watch it. Okay. I thought I, thought I seriously need surgery right this second. Like, you guys were talking about it, all this, and thought I needed it, and I'm like, what? I don't need it. Best right. news ever. Yep. Okay, we are back from the orthopedic surgeon. Landon has been following an orthopedic surgeon since he was tiny, tiny. He goes and sees them about every six months. They do a new set of x-rays. They are making sure that his muscles are keeping up with his bone growth in his heel cords, his hamstrings. Every child with cerebral palsy has spasticity, which causes tightness. And the tightness can be in different areas depending on the child. For Landon, it's in his heel cords, it's in his hamstrings, in his hips. So they do x-rays and they measure the shape of the socket that his hips goes, go into and they measure the length of his legs and they just evaluate how he's functioning. So even if his hips have a little bit of a twist in them, if he's functioning and he's walking well, then they don't do anything about it because the alternative for them is to do surgery. And surgery is a major, major undertaking and it can be a really great thing in the right situation, but if they're functioning well and it's not a super severe issue, then they try to avoid surgery because like I said, it's a huge, huge undertaking. So the doctor, had great news for us today. He felt like Landon is doing really, really well. In fact, his gait looks even better than the last time that we were there. For those of you who have been following us for a while, Landon did a gait lab at Shriners just a few months ago where they analyzed every detail of the way that he walks. It was the coolest thing. And anyway, so the, the orthopedic surgeon analyzes the results and then talks to us about the possibility of surgery and just where he's at. So the good news today is he analyzed the gait lab, he analyzed how he was functioning. It just was all good news. He felt like his spasticity was lower, he felt like he was functioning really well, and he didn't feel any need for Landon to have surgery. He says that he'd like to continue to keep watching him because the growth spurts that teenage boys have around 11, 12, 13, whenever they have their big growth spurt, that's when we really need to watch them to make sure that their muscles are able to keep up with the bone growth. But for today, I'm feeling super, super grateful that Landon's doing well. He said that his spasticity feels lower than usual and it's just amazing how those little victories are so huge. So I'm feeling super, super grateful today. So we've got our swimming suits on. We are off to the splash pad with my niece, Penny, to go enjoy some summer fun. All right, Ashley's going in the waterfall. <laughs> Taking a shower. Oh, <laughs> Twice now, I've been filming the kids going through the waterfalls, standing directly over a spout of water, and gotten soaked, just drenched, <laughs> twice in a row. All right, Ashley, what just happened? I just got my foot stung by a bee and he got stuck in my foot. He keeps stung, singing me. The venom, the venom is causing to my veins. Mr. Montgomery. I have been failed by a winged beast of destruction. He started hopping over in a total panic and I thought that he broke his foot. Turns out there was a bee stuck in the bottom of his foot. He's still over here. Right there. 
This mean little bug, this mean little bee, was stuck in the bottom of Ashton's foot. I had to pull it out and then pull the stinger out. There it is. First bee sting. And the worst bee sting. Aww. Okay, you guys, such a special day for cute little Ava. Today is her dance recital, and I could not be more excited. As you can see, got my dance mom shirt on. Our friend Stephanie made us these shirts last year, so we're now gonna be wearing them to recitals for many years to come. We are getting Ava ready. She gets to put her hair in a high pony, and then we're gonna curl the pony, and maybe put on a little bit of lipstick, and maybe a little bit of eyeshadow. It's the only time of the year she gets to wear makeup. It's going to be a very different kind of recital this year. They've really limited who you are able to invite and they are having just our three girls and their three families in the auditorium at a time. We are literally in there for 10 minutes where they do their performance and then we leave. They're trying to keep numbers small because of COVID and we're just grateful that we get to see her perform. It's a definite highlight for me as a mom, something that I just look forward to every single year. Okay, we just got here to the theater. We are literally performing in a group of three. Ava with her cousin Hazy and her friend Leah. It's so fun, we get the whole theater to ourselves. The girls are just going in there to get their costumes on. They're doing it differently this year. They're just like a little rental costume because of COVID. They weren't able to get costumes like they normally do. They all have their makeup on and their hair done in a high pony with curls and they're just getting their costumes on. I cannot wait. So they are giving everyone hand sanitizer as we go in. They are sanitizing the theater in between groups. This is the craziest thing. Good job, Ava! Woohoo! Good job, Hazy! Good job, Leah! Well, as you guys can see, it is a packed house here tonight. Uh, lucky enough, we were able to reserve the front row seats for this performance this evening. Now we're gonna go meet the girls in the back and present them with some flowers. <gasps> Ava! Look at you, girl! Ava, I was so impressed. Ava, here we Ava, we have something for you, by the way, because you did such an amazing job. Some beautiful flowers for our beautiful dancers. Ava, you knew every dance move. You were on key every time. 
I was so impressed. Yeah, I love you, honey. All right, you guys, so we came to Ava's much requested favorite treat spot. Can anyone guess what it is? Snow cones! Snow cones! What flavor are you gonna get? Uh, I'm gonna get rainbow. Rainbow? Yeah. You guys, you are looking at two proud parents right here. Very proud, you guys, Ava beaming. so darling. Watching her dance is one of my favorite things in the whole world. She knew every step of the dance, she knew every move. She's definitely at home when uh, she's on stage. She's a little performer. In fact, I'm probably gonna insert a little clip here of when she was two years old, her very first dance recital. Two years old, and she walks out on the stage, and the very first thing she does is just, she just waves, just waves to all her fans in the audience. It was the cutest thing. So this girl was born to, to be a dance. performer. Ava got a rainbow snow cone. So as we were ordering our snow cones, these people kept following us. We've seen them before. I don't know if you guys know them. I don't know. I'm a dance mom though. <laughs> we're snow cone lovers. <laughs> no joke. Did not mean to on purpose and both ended up at the very same snow shack. There are multiple snow shacks around here. Kind of feels like destiny. So everybody, Landon is majorly getting his flirt on right now. And these boys are over here laughing at him as he gets his flirts on. I don't think Landon will have an issue getting dates, that's for sure. Just a table full of girls and land out. Did you girls enjoy your snow cone? Listen, I have a broken arm. You have a broken arm? Or a, bro a broken leg? No, it's just because she has no shoe on Oh, shoot. Did you break it in your dance recital? No. You're just teasing. What kind did you get, Hazy? Rainbow. Rainbow, just like Ava? You guys are total twins, and your leotards, it's melted purple now, that's true. You can't see the rainbows anymore. Twin leotards, twin snow cones, twin lipsticks, twin ponies. Okay, as many of you know, our vlogs are delayed by a couple of days, and today is on on all social media, it's Blackout Tuesday, and we were able to participate in that on Instagram, but we weren't able to participate here because our content is delayed. So I just wanted to take a minute to talk about that here. I struggled to find the words because I don't know what it feels like to be in the shoes of an African American in America, and I fear that I won't do it justice, but I feel that it's important 
that I say something and that I don't just stay silent. And I remember a few weeks ago before everything recent has happened, during homeschool, Ashton and Lennon were learning about Martin Luther King and they were learning about Rosa Parks and the incredible leaders that they were. And I remember Lennon having to write a report on who inspired him and why. And he chose Rosa Parks and he talked about how brave she was and how that was inspiring to him. And it's just crazy to think because these are part of our history books, yet today there is still racism in America and it's not okay. The way that George Floyd died was senseless and it was horrific. And I just want all of our African American friends to know that we stand with you, that we love you, that we're listening, that we we are reading what you're saying and we're trying to understand better what we don't understand and we're trying to understand better how we can help. And I also want them to know that I will stand up for you. And hopefully today by speaking up on our YouTube channel, you feel our love and you know that we are standing up for you.